Hare Krishna. When we face setbacks and failures in life, how do we know whether we should keep pushing forwards or move on to something else? How do we know whether something is determined by destiny or something is within the scope of our free will? Should we just accept something as destined or should we use our free will better to try to change things? Answer, I will talk about this in terms of three points, three eyes. First is eye intelligence. The Bhagavad Gita states that buddhi helps us understand what is beneficial, what is harmful, what is desirable and what is undesirable. In 1830 it says that intelligence helps us guide ourselves properly. So, even in the routine experience of life, we can see that there are some things that are in our control and there are many that are beyond our control. So, essentially the Gita explains that the things that are within our control are, are within the scope of our free will. And the things that are beyond our control are a matter of destiny. So, what exactly is destiny? Destiny is not just some, not any mysterious malevolent force that arbitrarily controls things in our life or arbitrarily changes things in our life. No. The Gita talks about the principle of karma, which essentially is about individual responsibility. Karma is actually understanding that our actions matter, that the way we act can create a brighter future for ourselves or a darker future. So, we all have done certain actions in the past and if that karma has been unprocessed, that means the reactions to that karma have not yet manifested, then those are as if stored in a karma bank account or we could say a karma water tank and that water from that tank is going to come out. So, in the pathway of our life, our starting point for example, is determined by destiny. So, destiny is essentially the stockpile of unprocessed karma that we bring from our past into the present. It could be from previous life into this life, it could be from our past situations into our present situation. So, for example, the complexion with which we are born, the family in which we are born, the genes with which we are born, these are fixed. But what we do with what we have is very much up to us. So, destiny determines our situations, we determine our decisions. If you consider the body to be like a vehicle, as the Bhagavad Gita says in 1861 Yantra, then we are given a particular car. But it is up to us how we drive that car and that is why the focus is in the Bhagavad Gita on taking responsibility for the things that are in our hands. Now, when we encounter some failure, at that time what do we do? With this broad philosophical understanding of destiny and free will, how do we apply our intelligence? We try to analyze to the, our best intelligence, to a, okay, what exactly was the cause of failure? Was it because we didn't try well enough? Was it because things beyond our control just went wrong? So, through an analysis of our intelligence, we can decide whether we have endeavored sufficiently. If yes, then we might as well move on to something else. If we feel that we would like to try in a particular area more, that is also fine. But here the important point is to recognize that even when we face failures, we do not take those failures personally, we take them more objectively. The opposite of personal here is not impersonal but objective, I will explain what I mean by this. That brings us to the next point of I, identity. The Gita explains that our identity is multi-level, we are not just physical creatures. We are not just even rational creatures, we are actually conscious beings who have a body 
and who have a mind. But we are spiritual beings beyond all these. And externals, they affect us, but they don't define us. So, for example, when we seek something and we don't get it, we can, if we are objective, we can say, okay, I have lost. I tried to gain this, but I lost this. But if we tend to become, take things too personally, we may say, I am lost. And worst of all is the misidentification where we start thinking, I am a loser. But we are not losers, we are spiritual beings who are indestructible at our core. This loss is just like one thing which has come in our life, will stay and will go. So this misidentification, I am a loser, is what cripples people. It's what causes depression. It's what can impel people even towards suicide. By reminding us of our indestructible spiritual identity, the Gita reminds us that our core exists beyond the domain of destiny. Destiny may affect our biology or our psychology, but it cannot touch our spirituality. And thus by practices like yoga, especially bhakti yoga, which reinforce our awareness of our spiritual identity, we stay less affected by the upheavals that may come by destiny in our life. And that brings me to the last part, I, last I is inspiration. So we use our intelligence to understand whether things went wrong because of factors beyond my control or within my control. And then we keep ourselves secure at our core by remembering our spiritual identity and then we see how inspired do I feel to work in this particular area? So the Gita talks about our Swabhava, our innate nature. The Gita states that we can use our, our innate nature, which essentially refers to our innate areas of comfort and competence, where we feel good doing some things and where we are good at doing some things, that is Guna and Karma. And we use that to grow spiritually to realize who we are ultimately. So in one sense, the Gita's vision is that what we love presently can become our pathway toward what we wish to love ultimately. So we are all parts of the divine and the divine has put us in a particular situation right now by a higher plan. And if we feel inspired to push on toward in a particular activity, because that gives us intrinsic satisfaction. That means even if the world doesn't recognize what we, what we have done and what we have achieved, if we would still be satisfied doing that activity because that activity intrinsically enlivens us, then that is indeed an activity we should push on towards. And by that intrinsic satisfaction we will persevere and we will eventually come towards outer contribution, outer achievement also. So by making our decisions, not solely based on whether the world is recognizing me to be successful, but based on internal evaluation of whether I am in harmony with what I have been given and what I am meant to be. We can take decisions from an inside out perspective rather than an outside in perspective. In this way, we can use our free will to manifest our fullest potential. Thank you. Hare Krishna.